Hello. In this short video, you'll learn how to use the St Albans Thermal Imaging Camera. There are two cameras for users in the District of Borough, one based in Harpenden and this one. I'll be showing you which is based in St Albans. They are different models and they have slightly different features. So if you train to use the St Albans camera, you'll be borrowing the St Albans camera. It's a Fluke TIS-20. Here it is. I'm just switching it on. You press the green button for a few seconds, lift up the lens cover, and the screen will activate in a few seconds. The camera enables you to see the heat leaking from your home when you use it outside. It shows you the cold air coming into your home when you use it indoors. You see colour-coded pictures showing temperature differences, and these are best when the temperature between indoors and outside is at least 10 degrees Celsius, so typically on winter evenings. It doesn't have to be used at night. A cold, cloudy winter day will do too. But the camera shouldn't be used in strong sunlight, or you'll get distorted images, nor outside in rain or strong winds. Now, on the screen, you can see my front door. You use these up and down arrow buttons to switch between that visual picture and the thermal image of infrared light shown in false colours. In this thermal mode, blue is the coldest, moving through pink, red to pale yellow, the warmest region. There's also a combined mode, visual and thermal. You can select with the up and down arrow buttons, which is helpful for locating a particular region that you're looking at. Going back to the thermal image now, you see there's a temperature scale on the side. So in this image, deep blue corresponds to a temperature of about 11 and pale yellow corresponds to a temperature of about 19. The little cross at the centre of the image gives a spot temperature reading of 14.1 Celsius. As I move the camera slightly, the image and the temperature scale adjust to the highest and lowest temperatures in the image automatically. There's no way to focus the image. If you want to see more in the picture, just move further away. You need to be at least one metre, 20 centimetres away from what you're looking at, but there is no maximum distance. You can freeze an image by squeezing the green trigger here. The black trigger isn't in use on this model. And then simply take a photo of the captured image with your phone or save it by pressing the F1 function button on the left. You can look at all the images you've saved by pressing the memory view button, this black button on the right, and then use the arrow buttons to scroll and select the images to view on the screen. When you borrow the camera, it will be set up to save these images onto a micro SD card, which we supply. It's in here. And you can then remove the little SD card like this, it's a bit fiddly, you use a fingernail to press the top and it springs up and place it in the SD adapter, which is stored in the bag here, to download the images like you would for a normal camera. Or you use the USB to transfer them to your device. Please remember to replace our micro SD card in the camera. You push it in gently until it clicks and to replace the SD card reader and the USB stick in the bag. This is particularly important if you use your own micro SD card. The card will hold a great many JPEG images and they aren't very big. The camera will revert to sleep if there's no activity for a while. So if there's no image on the screen, press the green on button again lightly to reactivate it or the green trigger. 
If that doesn't work, check you've raised the lens cap. It's easy for this flap to close. When you're surveying your front door and windows, be aware that you can get reflections of your body in the image because glass and any shiny surface will act as a mirror for the infrared light. So it's best to stand to one side of the object you're looking at. Even things like shiny kitchen unit doors and metal door handles will reflect the heat very well. Also, be careful to exclude anything like a hot radiator or a power source from the image because that will make the temperature range much wider. So you won't get to see as much detail about temperature differences in the image here as this one here. Now, in some circumstances, you might want to fix the temperature scale manually instead of letting it change automatically. So you get more temperature detail. Say you can't avoid having a hotter object in the picture when you're examining your window for drafts. The easiest way of fixing the temperature range is to look at something with the range you want, like this, and then press the F1 function button, hold it down until you see manual above the temperature scale. And then when you move the camera to look at the window, it retains that temperature range and you can see more temperature detail. Objects with a higher temperature than the upper limit you fixed will appear bright green. You could keep the same temperature range to survey all the areas in your home if you want, but to revert to the auto temperature scale mode, just press and hold down the F1 function button again until auto appears above the temperature scale. There's another way to select the upper and lower temperature limits and fix the range, and that's by pressing the F2 function button, selecting measurement, and then set level span, and then manual. Now press the up and down arrow buttons, which will increase the limits by increments up. and down. The right and left arrow buttons widen or narrow the temperature range, like this. That's the span. But it's very fiddly to do. The other way I showed you is much easier. Now, the manual temperature mode is useful if you use the camera outside when the sky is clear, because the cloudless sky is very cold indeed, minus 40 or 50 degrees day or night time, so it will cause the lowest temperature in the automatic mode to be minus 40 or 50 degrees too. And you won't get so much temperature detail because the range is too big. Of course, the best thing is to avoid getting a patch of sky in the image. But this isn't always possible, especially if you're examining your roof for heat leaking from it or poorly insulated windows. Oh, and remember to stand to one side instead of directly facing the windows when you are checking these to avoid getting those reflections from your body. You'll most likely see very blue looking windows and it could be the reflection of the exceedingly cold, clear sky in them. It's quite hard to get far enough from your house to get a good image, but you can try pointing the camera at it from one side and then from the other side to avoid getting a misleading image from your reflected body heat or from the very cold image on the clear, of the clear sky. When you've finished using the camera, please remember to recharge it for a couple of hours using the mains adapter in the bag here, which plugs in at the top in this round hole here. Make sure you've replaced the micro SD memory card in the camera and the card reader in the pouch in the camera bag and the mains connector. I hope this has been useful and that the thermal camera will help you to tackle the heat loss in your home.